Okay, uh, good afternoon. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, just thank the fans uh, really for the whole year. Um, you know, the support they had um, on the road, at home, um, just outstanding. And uh, that was uh, certainly a, a, a very nice. I, I want to appreciate, the, uh, thank you and appreciate them. And then what I did in the locker room was I thanked the players, you know, because uh, really just for, you know, all the love and respect for, I have for those guys. Uh, you know, you live with somebody for a year, you build those relationships. I think that's a special thing. And uh, those guys worked. And I think I really thank them for building the culture that we want in our building at Hallis Hall. So um, guys went to work every single day. They respected each other. They worked hard. And uh, they built championship work habits. And that's what we need to have uh, going forward. You know, so those are the, really the overarching things. But uh, from the day, really good, uh, a couple of good performances. Obviously, the takeaways, again, were really good. We had uh, the last four games, we had eight takeaways, which was positive. You know, we had three, three, zero last week, and then two this week. I thought that was outstanding. You know, Valus had, uh, had a nice day. That was uh, pleasing to see. He had one catch for 28, but the run for 42 was, was really good with a lot of good blocking by his teammates. You know, the four returns for 82 yards was pretty good as well. Um, we thought also Cole had a nice day. You know, four receptions for 57. Uh, really did what he did the whole year. Um, you know, Cole's just a ball of energy. Um, he's, a, he's a really good leader in our locker room, and uh, he's done a great job for us uh, that way. Um, you know, so overall, obviously, you know, the season was disappointing. Uh, we know that, uh, but there's a lot of hope for the future. You know, we're looking forward to um, having exit interviews uh, tomorrow with all the, uh, the active roster guys. We did IR and practice squad guys on Friday, which was really good. Uh, getting their feedback. Ryan and I sit together in my office and uh, bring the players in and ask for the feedback, how we can improve really every facet of our organization, you know, from the training room, the equipment room, you know, the performance, uh, and then the coaching and, and everything from A to Z. So I think that's a really good, have gotten a lot of good feedback from the guys so far. So we're looking to improve our organization that way. Um, so with that, I'll open up to questions. You're obviously in, in constant contact with Ryan, but as you guys get into this next phase of things, what's your eagerness and, and confidence level and the connection to, to go out and attack an off season that's going to be really important? Yeah, it's, it's really, it's really uh, cool because you got a year under your belt now. You know, you really have a, a really good understanding of where the organization is, where you are as a group, and you really have a clear eye view of that, which I think is really outstanding. And then going in now this year for free agency and into the draft, I just think you're ahead. You know, you're just ahead that way. What was your reaction to finding out that you guys are going to have a couple Yeah, I just found out about it. You know, so, you know, again, that's something we'll talk about in the future. I don't really have a reaction one way or the other right now. Just that I'm focused on our guys and doing the exit interviews for tomorrow. When was it disappointing not to be able to – of this losing streak before the season ended? Yeah, it's always disappointing, you know, when you when you don't uh, put the W up. But, uh, again, our eyes are forward now. I, I thought our guys battled today. I thought they did a really nice job of that. Uh, and, again, they worked hard together. Um, it didn't come out on the end on our side, but uh, that's the way it is. You know, what's your confidence level between draft assets, number one pick, all the salary cap space? What's your confidence level in Ryan Pulse to give you a roster that you can win? Oh, high confidence, no question. No question. You know, the first thing of a personnel man is the ability to pick players, and he can do that. You know, the place where he came from, he's shown that this year already. And, uh, you know, we look, we look at the guys the same way. You know, we like, we like long, lean, fast, physical players. And uh, that's certainly – we've both been a part of that in our past, and we're excited about getting that going. You guys have been pretty open about, you know, this season uh, you took on a lot of dead cap money. It, you know, a lot of it was kind of – you know, tearing down to build back up. Are you energized by the idea of transitioning to kind of that build back up, you know, with a full complement of draft picks with that sort of money? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the one of the main focuses of this year was to build foundational floor to build up, you know. So, and I think we did that. And it's a credit to those, those players in that locker room. Uh, they did a really good job, you know, of, you know, we all know what it is, the effort, you know, the intensity, you know, those guys being smart, you know, being – you know, one of the least penalized teams in the league, you know, doing that, you know, taking care of the ball. We didn't do that great. It wasn't elite. You know, it was okay. And we got to certainly improve on that. But uh, really, my hat's off to those guys in the locker room. Is this, 
you mentioned Cole earlier. Uh, obviously, we know what he's meant to the, the program. But in terms of skill development, where have you seen him come along in that regard? Throughout yeah, the I've seen a lot of guys develop this year. You know, and he's one of them, no, no question. And uh, you know, his blocking's gotten a lot better. Um, his use of his hands and and his blocking on the perimeter has really improved. And uh, you know, his yards, his run after the catch is really, really amazing, you know, and I think that uh, where he can get even better is, is him catching in traffic, you know, um, in the red zone, which I think he'll, he will improve on, no question, but man, he's, like I said, he's everything we stand for. When you took the job about a year ago now, how mm-hmm. braced were you for this kind of season? Were you expecting to go into your first year head coach, quite high expectations, enthusiasm, were you braced for this? Yeah, I, I think I, I think so um, because I don't really look at you know you look at results for sure, but I, you look at also have the, a broader view of what you're getting done, you know, and what is that? Well, like I said, it's laying foundation, but it's also developing the young core players that we had. You know, that was a big goal for us. You know, the rookie class. You know, obviously we played a bunch of those guys. Uh, the second year players like Justin. Um, Mooney, you know, Cole Komet, those younger type players and developing those players to really build upon that foundational floor. And as we start to add talent and start to add these guys, again, free agency and draft is no different. It's going to be up to the uh, coaches to develop those guys and to fit them into the scheme so we can play winning football. Do you anticipate any changes on your staff? At, at this time? Yeah. yeah. You know, we'll look at everything and evaluate everything as we go. Again, we, we'll take a breath. It's just like with the players. You take a breath, you look at it, and, uh, and you want to make sure that you're doing a good job where it takes time, let things settle down, and go from there. This is your first time as a, ending a season as a head coach. What is your process of sitting there and saying, okay, you know, is this working on my staff, whether it's position coaches or otherwise? Yeah, I mean, the first thing you do is uh, go through the process of exit interviews for the players. You know, so that's a big part of it. And again, we're we're assessing everything there. Like I said, from the training room all the way through the coaches, and and then from there you go. And the next week you do your coaches. You know, you go meet with the position coaches, the coordinators, sit down and talk to them, and see where everything is. How did you handle throughout this year the trades that made uh, that weakened your roster for this season, <clears throat> like trading Khalil Mack, Roquan, Robert Smith? Yeah, I mean, it just when you when that happens, stuff like that happens. Obviously, that's a big thing that happens to your football team. And the thing I noticed was, you know, certainly on the defensive side of the ball, you could feel that. I mean, I could feel it in the locker room. So, and I could feel it for a couple weeks. I really could. I could feel that because they're so interconnected, you know, as human beings. And and you could feel that a little bit during that time. So, again, that's something that we decided as a group, you know, that was best interest of the organization. And uh, but the, I thought the players did a really good job of, of really coming back together, okay, and harnessing back together the culture. So uh, my hats off to them again about that. Let's call it, the culture is important. Obviously, you created one here. Mm-hmm. How realistic is it though that a lot of these players who are here establishing this culture won't be here when you actually are good? Yeah. Well, I would say this: that it's both. You know, you, when you're establishing culture, you understand you're doing that every single year. It's like, you know, uh, lacing up your shoes every year during training camp. And really, the offseason starts in April. You have to rebuild that, okay? But what you have now is you have the young group that's in there that was here that understands it. So when we onboard free agents and we onboard these draft picks, then it'll, it'll just be stronger. It'll come together faster and stronger, and that's what the benefit of that is. Yeah, you've talked a lot about the foundation, laying the foundation the last mm-hmm. few weeks. What, what is it about the foundation that maybe isn't as evident you know, by numbers that you in particular really think you'll be able to build it? Yeah, I would just say the, the, the feeling you have of the brother next to you that you can trust in him, that he's going to do his very best, be the best version of himself. He's going to do right, okay, and he's going to work hard. And if you have that, guess what, and you start adding talent, guess what, that buoy starts to rise, okay, and that's going to happen here. So... We're, we're excited about that going forward. With, with the emotions that were ongoing earlier in the week with, yeah. that, with Lamar Hamlin, how, how would you describe for your team and, and your group this morning and just kind of crossing that bridge into a game day um, after the entire week? Yeah, that's a good question. I thought the guys were positive, upbeat. You know, I really didn't feel anything. I kind of felt it more on Thursday going into Friday, and then obviously Saturday was, was good. I think it was just a weight lifted off everybody that, uh, you know, DeMar's doing really good. His family's in a good spot, and, uh, you know, Obviously, our hats off to the Buffalo Bills, and you know, our hearts out to them. And uh, I wanted to say, but uh, yeah, so that's where that is. Yep. You know, what did you guys tell uh, Jaquan Brisker? He was addressing that in the locker room. What did you guys tell him when he said he needed some time away because of it? Yeah, take all the time you need. Take all the time you need. And you 
you guys just wanted to give him a space. This, yeah, I wanted to give him space to just, you know, you know, breathe and ha reflect. And again, we are in constant contact with them. And again, like I said before earlier in the week, everybody handles things differently. And you got to give guys space to be able to do that. Matt, I know you've said over, you, over the years that the standard is the standard. Yep. But are, are you prepared for expectations to be different in year two for how many wins you guys have, how much success you have on the field than they were in year two? Yeah, that, that to me is outside. That's outside the locker room. So I can't, we can't control those things. And again, we're focused on our standard, how we operate in practice, in the meetings, and then in the game. Okay? Thanks, Thanks. Thanks.